When we get high pressure, we often talk about the fact that it means the air is descending. And so by that logic, the cloud won't be forming, won't be bubbling up. And so you often get sunny skies. However, if we get moisture trapped within the high pressure and because the air is so stagnant, because the winds aren't really moving, the moisture doesn't go anywhere. And so we end up with cloud developing and sticking around and it can stay quite gloomy. Now, as we go through into this weekend, we are firmly under the control of high pressure. And actually, there will be some clearer, some brighter breaks at times through this weekend. I think if I put my cloud amount on um, at times, you know, as we go through, let's zoom in a bit more as well. Through Saturday, worth bringing in mind, there could be some mist and fog patches first thing, particularly around, say, the Vale of York, maybe start off a bit foggy and any of that, that will lift and clear away as we go through the day. And actually, by the time that we get to the afternoon, away from some southern counties where it's looking quite cloudy and away from much of Scotland, where there will also be a bit of rain pushing in, for many, actually, there will be some bright, sunny weather around. Then as we go through uh, Saturday into Sunday, we uh, stick with that kind of idea. So probably more clear skies Saturday night into Sunday. And with that, then we have the greater chance of seeing slight, some slightly lower temperatures. So it's going to be a chillier start on Sunday morning. And with that, probably more widespread fog developing as well, particularly across much of England and, and Wales really as well, where we get the more prolonged clear skies. So watch out for that. Fortunately, with it being a Sunday morning, fewer people will be taking to the roads and traveling early on. So it's likely to be less impactful than perhaps if it was coming during the working week. But nonetheless, the fog could be quite dense. So we may need to issue some warnings for that nearer the time. My point being, there will be some clear skies. And then again, the mist, the fog, that will lift. And then uh, once more through Sunday, there will be some sunny breaks for most. There's still a, a bit of rain actually across the Orkney, Shetland, and perhaps towards the southeast, but mostly dry as we go through Sunday. However, what I needed to show you, if I zoom out a bit and go back, is there are some frontal systems toppling around. There's an area of low pressure out to the west of us. There are some frontal systems uh, nearby. Uh, and it's these, the moisture in association with these, that is actually going to end up being absorbed by the high pressure as we go through into the beginning of next week. And what that then leads to is because this is quite a stagnant feature with the high pressure just sitting over us and particularly light winds, that moisture that's coming in from that fronts that are rippling around, that's going to kind of get trapped within us. It, there's not a lot to clear it away. Remember, you know, the days are getting shorter. I'll touch on that more in a second. Uh, and so, and the sun's really losing its strength as well in terms of what's reaching the strength of the sun that's reaching the, uh, the northern hemisphere. Uh, and as a result, there's less to help clear that cloud away. And so it, it could look quite gray, quite murky really, through large chunks of next week. So although it's going to be largely dry, we're going to end up in this anti-cyclonic gloom with a lot of cloud around. Now, the, interestingly, this uh, could cause some problems for some energy sectors because it's going to be a bit of an issue for the renewables energy sector in particular. Now, there's a, a German term for it, Dunkelflauter, which uh, talks, well, the literal trans, or not the literal translation, but roughly translates as dark lull in winds when it's cloudy and the winds are light. And, you know, so that means there won't be much solar energy, there won't be much wind energy. Uh, and so renewable energy sources are going to be a bit lacking as we go through next week. It can also have some more immediate impacts, uh, perhaps in your garden, maybe you've got some solar lights out and they might actually start to struggle as we go through next week. Other items, other lighting, etc., other features that rely on solar, panel, pa uh, solar energy to keep them topped up, they also might seem to struggle as we go through next week because of the lack of, of much sunshine. It's going to be quite cloudy. As we go through later on next week, really through much of the week, high pressure sticking around. Yes, it is going to be quite calm wind wise but it's going to be quite cloudy and with that i would expect some outbreaks of drizzly rain at times as well nothing heavy but just a bit damp at times too but how long is the high pressure going to stick with us well if we look at our probabilistic pressure trend chart and if you've not seen this before, what we're looking at are previous model runs, so the older model runs at the bottom and the more recent model runs at the top. And then we're looking through the next two weeks 
suggesting what the most dominant pressure pattern across the UK is going to be. And the reds indicating that high pressure is most likely for the time being. Really, it's 100% likely all the way until at least the middle of next week and even then beyond to the end of next week, high pressure looks firmly set to stay in control. And it's been like that. That's the forecast, how it's been for quite a while. Then towards the uh, back end of next weekend into the following week, so the week beginning the 20th of October, that's when we'll start to see a change. And so the setup's going to become more mobile. Instead of quite a slack flow across us, we're likely to get this westerly flow coming in. And so that means, uh, you know, we're going to see some wetter, some windier weather pushing through. Most of that with a westerly flow will be across western parts. Further east, it's going to be that little bit drier. But uh, nonetheless, things are going to be more changeable. Worth bearing in mind with that then, that brings, you know, you couldn't rule out some particularly wet and windy spells, so some impactful rain, some impactful winds uh, as we go through the end of October and into November, but that's pretty much usual for this time of year. Also worth factoring in, whilst it is likely or pretty guaranteed to turn more unsettled through the end of the month and into November, there will be some dry periods. So it's not every day is going to be wet and windy, it's just going to be wetter and windier than we have through the next week. One factor though that I did want to highlight as well, if we look at our forecast confidence index and it's around normal, the confidence now, confidence always decreases or generally decreases as we go uh, further ahead, as we're looking further ahead, as you would expect. Uh, and the, the confidence is about normal for the time being. But actually around that same period where I highlighted we're likely to see that change to more unsettled weather, confidence is significantly lower than average. And why that is? Well, it's always difficult to be too clever, too precise when it comes to the transition from one weather setup to another when you're looking over a week ahead. And so I think as we go towards around the 20th of October, that's when we're going to start to see that change to a more mobile westerly setup. But uh, it may take a, a couple of days longer or it may come just that little bit earlier. So exactly when we see that change, still uh, a little bit uncertain, but we are going to see that unsettled change pushing through. Now, one thing, uh, just to go back to a question that we had earlier on talking about rainfall across parts of the southeast, and I do actually have forecast 36 hour rainfall accumulations for the first three days of next week, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and looking across the whole of the country. Now, I've split it into different model outputs. So we have the Met Office model on the left hand side, our European ECMWF model uh, in the middle, and also the GFS, the American model on the right hand side. Now, they're all going with the idea of high pressure across us, so generally dry. But when you look at the detail for the rainfall, well, they paint a slightly different picture. Now, obviously, the resolution for the American model, because of where they are, over the UK is much greater. And so it's much less detailed. And so it's not quite capturing the drizzly rain that we're going to be getting at times through next week, which is why it suggests things are largely dry. But it still goes with the idea that across the far north, northeast, and also across the far east, southeast of England, there will be some wetter weather at times. And that's the same idea through ECMWF and also the Met Office model, which has that, the higher resolution. So more likely to pin out uh, or pick out the detail. Perhaps the highest rainfall totals are a little bit overdone in association with this. Um, but even still, it's only picking out like 10 to 15 millimetres across parts of Kent, for example, where it's likely to be wettest as we go through the first three days of next week. Now, 10, 15 millimetres through uh, three days, that really isn't a substantial amount. That's not going to be enough to help alleviate any ongoing drought issues uh, because of the very dry weather that we had through spring and through much of summer. So it's not really going to be the, the wet weather that some people are calling out for, even though it is technically going to be the wettest place in the UK it's still not very damp. Most places are just yet yeah, going to have a few outbreaks of drizzly rain. So nothing particularly heavy. We have to really wait until the end of or towards the end of the month for more unsettled weather to come through. But as I mentioned earlier, with a westerly pattern, a lot of that will be hitting western parts uh, most significantly. So that's where we're going to see the highest rain. That's where we're going to see the strongest winds. Nonetheless, I would expect some rain, some heavy rain to push its way towards the east.